We are so used to our cushion of technology that it's really hard for us middle class writing people, most of us, um, to imagine what it's really like to have to live on the ground, making your living out of the ground, especially if the ground is poisoned or all the topsoil has been washed away or there isn't any water to, to raise things with. And I think people have, by and large, understated the simple physical impact of the things that we are doing because nobody wants to read about that. It's too scary. It's too horrifying and it's too guilt-inducing. And when you finish a book that tells you what it really would be like to come out after a nuclear holocaust or what we seem to be having instead, which is probably a lot of little nuclear holocausts and or other non-nuclear yet, but they will be, and, um, and environmental disaster. Uh, if you really read a book that told you the truth about that, you'd go out and cut your throat. I mean, it's hard enough to lose one person out of one's life, God knows. If you lost your society, most of us have just failed to imagine what that would be like. It would, it would actually probably destroy most people so they would not be very functional. It's the falseness that I feel in the survivalist movement. They're going to be so, so grand running around with their guns and their stashed food, you know, and so on. They're going to be feeling real cheerful. Yeah. I think that what science fiction does best is end of the world stories, and I have done many end of the world variations through my career and that too is something I'm always fascinated with. I think because because unless the world ends you can't possibly look at yourself very clearly. Um, so long as your world is around you you're, you're fairly safe and you can be as oblivious as you like but when the world ends then you have to come to grips with what you loved and hated about it and, and, and what's left which is you.